um, a service honoring mothers and other women. And in the Methodist Church, it's also called the Celebration of Family Life. My call to worship, um, I tried to pick some names out here and see how, how good you are with some of these biblical names here. This is a day that is set aside for women and celebrate also that of the Christian home. First of all, we remember Sarah, one of my favorites, who laughed at conception and then gave birth to Isaac. She became, as you may remember, the mother of Israel. And we remember Esther, who risked her life to save her people from genocide. We remember Ruth, of course, who left her home out of devotion to her mother-in-law. And of course, we remember Mary, whose strong sense of love and justice nurtured the baby and the man and the Christ Jesus. We remember Anna. In some ways, she was a prophet. We remember the woman at the well and the three women at the tomb who recognized a vision that the rest of the world somehow missed. We honor these women created in God's image as well as all women who have influenced our life. Now, if we were our cute little church, I would take time and sort of walk away from the microphone and I would say something like this. I would like several of you to tell me who it is that you most remember this day. Was it a mother? Was it a grandmother? Was it a public school teacher? Maybe it was a Sunday school teacher. Maybe it was a special aunt. Maybe a sister. Or even like me, maybe it was your next door neighbor. You think about who that might be in your life, and I'm going to have a prayer. Let me have a prayer. Oh Lord, forgive us for the times that we have ignored the cries of women, the mothers who watch their children go off to war, the wives and the friends who were left behind to struggle alone, the women of faith whose stories we forget, the women who followed their vision in the pursuit of human dignity, the homemakers who provided nurturing and a safe place, make us sensitive to the anguished cries that echo still, the homeless, the poor, the hungry, and the ill, the lonely, the aged, O oh God, who loves us like a parent, forgive us. Amen. And these words now of assurance, inasmuch as God has birthed us and nursed us and encouraged each of us to grow, God will also forgive <coughs> and accept us as God's gift with unconditional love. <clears throat> May we accept this gift as our challenge as we listen to this anthem.
Keith and Cheryl, we thank you for um, all of our friends at Stony Brook United Methodist, and especially your daughter, Sky, who has helped us each week, and we appreciate that very, very much. I also ought to thank my wife, Emily. She, she helps me get through this every Sunday, and I don't know what I do without all three of you, so thank you very much. Um, I'm going to announce that um, in June sometime, we're going to need to have a church council meeting. Uh, we're going to end our, we have ended our Bible study for Wednesday. We have three things we're going to begin to think about, and the church council uh, would like for them to at least talk about this. First of all, some of you remember from Christmas time, our storage place out in the yard, I don't know what you want to call the shell or whatever it is out there. It's either in need of repair or to be replaced. That's item number one. Item number two, and Joel may be the only one concerned about this, but I really believe um, our siding uh, on our church um, needs to be professionally cleaned. We've, we've got some areas that I think it would be helpful for our own health that that was uh, washed uh, in, in a, a way that, that would, would help clean some things off. And then third of all, I'm going to be starting uh, to clean the basement up. Um, along the way, I may ask for some help, but the basement really needs to be cleaned up. And I'm not talking about just cleanliness. There's stuff all over there if you watched it. I'm going to talk to the church council about um, having tables being brought up by the kitchen area and toward the back area would be where the children's thing would be. We, we need to maximize that space down there a little more than we're doing. So anyhow, you'll hear some of this. I just have a, a brief homily or a sermon this morning, but some of that I'm going to talk about. The scripture lesson is a very short one. It's one of my favorites. Maybe you, um, as a youngster, memorized this. Uh, it's from Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew, the uh, 19th chapter, and um, beginning with the 13th verse. Then children were brought to him that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked the people, but Jesus said, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And he laid his hands on them and went away. Uh, some of that we even in our scripture lessons sometimes, um, we have a way of using that in the baptismal service there. Um, I want to talk a little bit about mothers, and females, families. Probably no subject has been painted or sculptured more than the picture of the Mary, the mother of Jesus. If you've ever gone to a gallery, you might see a picture of Mary holding the baby. And then you walk down a little farther and there will be Mary again, Mary with a grieving mother look on her face as her son's arms are around his mother. From birth to death, from first to last, Mary was always faithful. It's good to remind ourselves of the words, Hail Mary, blessed art thou among women. This is not an invention or a property of a particular church. These are words that actually, folks, come from the Bible and belong to all of us as Christians. They can have a particular meaning for us in the week of Mother's Day, the festival of the Christian home. Do you remember the time in the Bible when Jesus blessed the children? Remember, I just read it. None of those children were obviously his. The disciples scolded the adult people who brought their children to Jesus, essentially telling them that Jesus had more important things to do. They needed to move on with the children. 
But Jesus corrected the disciples, letting them know how important the children were to him. Then he blessed them. Whether you have children or not, you can always have a positive effect in the lives of children. Those children that you know and those that live in hunger or poverty or a war torn area around the world. It is especially, I think, tragic when children must depend simply on adults that are not around. And they suffer when the larger community could have made a difference. The answers can be difficult to find, but it's not simply for someone else to worry about. We can all be involved in a small part in making the world better, especially for children. Our part of the answer may be a volunteer, a, a little commercial from the Reverend here. We're going to need about four teams of people to help with our children's Christian education program. It's already set up. The Methodist Church gave us money that we can have the furniture that's down there and the background of the literature. What I'm hoping is no adult has to be down there more than one time per month. So we're talking probably six, seven, eight people. We need to have two people together. Now, personally, I don't mind if children are in the sanctuary for worship. If that's a decision of the children and their parents, that's fine. And maybe on that Sunday, there's no one down there. So you automatically, hopefully, will not slip outside and go home, but you'll come back up for worship. But anyhow, that's a goal I have. I want to try to do something with the space that we have. Let me challenge you with three or four things here, and I'm, I'm just almost done. Be a model, folks. We've got a wonderful little church, and we are growing. A um, couple more folks I've talked to that we have not had a church yet probably will be starting to come to our church when we get back in. I'm predicting that'll be in June. And we'll practice all the proper things that we need to do to help each other. But we need to be prepared. So be a model, a happy, positive, God-fearing person. Children, you know, today they have so many models, and a lot of them are negative models. They are anti-heroes. Show them how there are adults that are creative and responsible. Use your own model as you remember scripture and your own life of noble people in the Bible. We need to show our children the joy of responsibility and that attitudes, I learned this a long time ago, are often caught rather than taught. Second of all, we need to help our children understand how to handle troubles. It's not an easy world. Show them that trying to do it alone is not necessarily very easy. But when you have one other person that can help you, maybe it's a friend at church, or maybe it's God that is their partner, show them that they can literally take and turn scars into stars. Show them that a belief in God can really help them, even as a child. Thirdly, let us observe how we relate to our extended family. Children need to see that, that we love each other, that we really and truly are a community of faith. Several years ago, as I said just a while ago, we had some church leaders that proudly and brought to us a grant where we could do some things with children during worship service or any other time. We will probably change some, some things in the basement. Um, the church council will talk about it. It's not something that I'm gonna automatically do. It's a decision, obviously, of our church. 
But we need to have a place where we can sit and talk and maybe have a pizza or the children can have their class. I've talked with a couple of the gentlemen. They know my hope is bringing um, a picnic table or two permanently and putting it in the church lawn that maybe after church, you know, when some of this clears up a bit, not for a while, I know, uh, we can sit outside and eat and talk to each other. God has given to all of us the gift of children. We can do a lot more than we're doing, and I want to challenge us to do that. In the meantime, I'd like to close um, with, um, not me personally, but with another piece of music. And I believe this is a hymn, Cheryl. Let me close with two thoughts and a prayer and a benediction. Let me pray. Eternal Spirit, we are indebted to the inspiration of our mothers. We know that no mother is perfect. And yet, without their willingness to try and try and try again, it would be a very unpleasant world. We thank you for the, our mothers. We are indebted to our female co-keepers of our household who are independent enough to pursue hobbies and careers and yet take time to pursue the arts of homemaking and child making and husband loving. We pray for mothers who have had high hopes for children but maybe not realistic ones. Help them to grow together with patience and support, Lord. Be with each of us now in the week ahead. May we go forth remembering the persons who have nurtured us and with renewed dedication, we go in the pathway of our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever, amen. <laughs>